Morgan. It is a great privilege and honor for me to be sitting here today with Corolla Krauss and Elkin Hofdorfer to talk about the exhibition Klaus Oldenburg, the 60s. To begin, I would like to thank Akim, Corolla, and all the staff at Mumak, Claudia, for making this exceptional show possible. I first met Ahim in Madrid in February 2010 at the time of the gallery show featuring the European desktop, a work my father made in the 1990s in collaboration with his late partner, my mother, Kosha von Brugge. Over a breakfast meeting, Ahim presented his idea for an extensive exhibit of my father's early work encompassing the street, the store, the home, and the monuments told thematically through the prism of the Mouse Museum and Ray Gun Wing as a conceptual device with which to look back onto the 60s. For the next two years, we continued to meet with increasing regularity at my father's Broom Street studio in New York City, engaging in discussion and poring over abundant archives, leaving literally no drawer unopened. <laughs> To assist Ahim in putting together this beautifully crafted exhibition that can boast of never before seen materials. Working with Ahim has been a true pleasure and a great learning experience. He combines keen intelligence with an intuitive understanding of the work, informed by hours spent studiously and respectfully in the company of the artist and his surroundings absorbing firsthand the artist's work practice in order to distill meaning and do justice to the art when it comes time to hang it on the walls or lay it on the floors. I believe my father and Akin share a natural propensity for and are firm believers in the creative potential of close collaboration. It has been a tremendous joy for me to be their third partner in crime. In the winter of 1978, Klaus brought our family from the small town of Deventer in the Netherlands to New York City. For me, arriving as a four-year-old at the Broom Street studio was like being given a Russian nesting doll, a Matryoshka doll, of ever-opening possibilities. From the enticing food clippings, I chose to decorate my bedroom walls to the painted duck decoy left over from the performance photo death that sat atop my bookshelf to the horse-shaped Native American Indian rattle that always exacted a ritual shape on forays into Klaus's studio. The building was populated with an array of objects whose uncanny power to transfix and transform was undeniable in our loft home as a result of an urban ideal. Present, too, were the store reliefs hanging on the former Navy engine factory's white brick walls, those exquisite dripping shapes that watched over me as I did my homework at the kitchen table and with heady color, texture, and always foremost form, attested to Klaus's stated goal of putting paint into space. Returning to the lexicon of my childhood with Achim, I find these same works as alive and immediate and relevant and complicated today as they were to me some three decades ago. Achim also asked me to contribute a chronology to the substantial scholarly catalog that accompanies this exhibition. In keeping with the collaborative spirit Achim favors to such great effect, the catalog is a product of tremendous effort on the part of all its contributors, including, as Achim mentioned, his co-editor Barbara Schroeder, who's here today, and all the terrific essayists, as well as the designer Joseph Logan, to write the chronology, I spent two intensive weeks interviewing Klaus in marathon sessions I will hold forever dear for teaching me about my father, but also, and what I think is a main point of this exhibition, for the transformative experience actuated by first-hand memories joined with the new enthusiasms of younger generations. In a kind of meta-narrative, the show can be said to track the development of Klaus's alter ego from ray gun to geometric mouse the first a primitive sign in the landscape, both natural and man-made, the latter a cerebral composition of geometric shapes, including that bearer of all progress, the circle. Accordingly, the Mouse Museum is often likened to the inside of the artist's head. By extension, the museum is equally representative of the history of art and of the humanity from which art derives, implicating all its social, economic, and political pursuits. To successive generations, the collection of objects speaks as much about a past as about the future through the constancy of form. And Klaus's gift, ultimately with his museum and its wing, is the expression of a boundless optimism and faith in the role of art. Thank you. 